Richard Howell Evans founded RHE in 1997 after working with Richard Horden in the UK and picking up international experience with Philip Cox and Daryl Jackson in Australia. With a very varied workload in this country and abroad, RHE Studio is difficult to pin down as a practice. So Richard, perhaps uh, we can look at some London jobs to understand your approach and uh, Roots in the Sky won an NLA award for best unbuilt project um, and it's billed as the first London building with a forest on its roof and it's a, it's a pretty complex reworking of the old Blackfriars Court so uh, can you tell me more about that? Yeah I'd love to. Um, first we're delighted to pick up the NLA award um, as always we picked up two on that occasion which was was wonderful. Um, yeah, Blackfriars is a, a really interesting opportunity for us to, to sort of um, embrace a lot of the sort of current strands in our thinking. Um, it, was a, it was one of the competitive interview together with uh, developer Fabrics London and not what we thought was a 1980s sort of court building, but it turned out to be the HM stationary office where Hansard was actually printed. Um, and so in our initial thinking was, well, we'll keep the building, we'll make a route through it, we'll sort of activate the, a new street within the building, make a great atrium there. Um, so uh, Roots in the Sky was a very, very rich menu of options that we, we sort of put forward to the client, as we always do. Um, and they uh, well, were very generous in the amount of sort of options that they ticked. Um, and although people talk about the forest on the roof, which is, is fantastic, and basically so that you know, the forest is a forest because just because the amount of acreage, so we're over one acre, it is by definition a forest. Um, so, you know, it won't, I, th I think sort of post mound, there's a lot of sort of concern over, well, how realistic is this? And, you know, you and I have both seen on our sort of journey through the Royal Docks, those dead living walls, you know, or dead walls as they would be now. And so, you know, even before that, that even, even before the map, we were making sure that we had a minimum, for example, of 1.2 meters of soil, which is kind of extraordinary because the journey started out as how many stories can we get on the top of this existing building? And there we are now putting one and a half meters of soil on the roof. So obviously those foundations are pretty, pretty solid things. Um, but I guess that's about now coming back to that experience of the building and experience of the, of the place. And having enough variety in the space to actually make that your sort of favorite space you know so everyone talked about you know home being the best space second space is your is your office and third space was you know the other place you go to which you know became the sort of idea that we worked with matthew freud on third space gyms but actually now i think to actually get people back in the office we were doing this before covid but happily our thinking sort of aligned on that that um, you know, it has to be a special place to go and you're doing different things from the things you were doing before. Um, and it's about creating creative workspaces that actually bringing people together, actually they're doing the best work they can. And I think we're all embracing that. And, you know, our office, which is a mass timber office, is hugely flexible. And we, I, I was sort of listening to a podcast the other day by the designer from Tesla and they're talking about updates to their vehicles. And he said, well, where did this idea come from for the, the rock party, which I know what happens when the lights come on and off and the doors open and close and it, the, the car performs. And he said, actually, it came from an intern. And I, and I thought well, that's absolutely fantastic that a company of that nature could actually take an idea and it would actually get to production so quickly. And I kind of looked around and went, well, are we making sure that we can do that within our own environment. And I think a lot of it to do has to do with the physical workspace you're in and making sure that it's a community that, that feel comfortable feeding ideas and, and, and thoughts into that. So our kind of working process here is to quickly come up with a series of ideas and then sort of work with people in the office and the client and the other consultants. And usually we're editing them down, but sometimes we're not. We're sort of talking about an idea and a lateral thought will come out. Um, for example, we're doing something with um, <clears throat> Aviva and uh, Sellers at 40 Bermondsey Street, um, where the project manager suddenly had sort of suggested that, you know, perhaps with our, our sort of roof terrace that we could actually 
take the original restructure and create a sort of nursery on the roof. And what a fantastic idea. So we're, we're sort of, you know, we're, we like to think we're incredibly inclusive in those ideas. So I always think that, yeah, we've got loads of ideas. So don't worry about stepping on our toes. It's just that ideas are good and they're not enough around. And I think they keep being edited back by the sort of these huge teams that come together and have guidelines that, that sort of make creative thinking more difficult. So, so Roots and Sky a, is a kind of celebration of a lot of those thoughts. <clears throat> so you're also doing the gramophone works with on a rather nice site next to Regent's Canal in North Kensington. And, and CLT is a feature there, isn't it? Absolutely. So that's another um, existing building, which was actually the Sarnison Fabric Warehouse. Um, which has an extraordinary um, uh, reinforced concrete structure with mushroom columns. Again, we found that, you know, one, we looked at two options, demolition, and we looked at maintaining the building. Um, that, that building has such a fantastic frame that we kept it. I think there's also a kind of thirst for authenticity and originality in terms of the structure so that we could, we could go into a building which was built in 1920, surrounded by a building of 2020, 100 years later, marrying those together. And there's a real joy in the connection between the concrete and the mass timber. I, I love the, the, the fact that it's a material with great tactile nature. You go into a CLT building, it smells good. It's, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like, it has embodied wellness within it. Then if we're trying to hit sort of outstanding, excellent or outstanding Briam, your sort of streets apart using that, that technology. Um, I think the other things about mass timber are dry construction. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful when you go to a CLT site and it's a dry construction, there's no sort of cement mixes on the site, no huge mess around the place. And it's, and it's a sort of, it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. And it really is sort of clipping this kit of parts together that are and introduced to the to the site um, it's extremely efficient in terms of the program extremely efficient in terms of engineering off-site um, and then of course it's a self-finished product so you're getting something which is sort of the zeitgeist of, of the sort of workplace right now um, which is to have been enclosed in this sort of timber structure highly insulated with great light levels that smells good and i always i come back to that because i think uh, our initial work was in health clubs and spas, and then we went into sort of hotels, and we were always sort of doing commercial space alongside. And I'm sure we'll come on to this during our discussion, but we always find that one thing informs the other. So, you know, the, the current sort of what's happening in the, in the workplace. In the last 10 years, or probably less, um, really that's been informed by people's thirst for design, uh, and the sort of WeWorks and that kind of uh, co-working space has really sort of, that's almost been hotel-like. And so we were already working in that space and our, our approach has always been sort of to choreograph. So you're arriving at work, how do you come? Like for example, Alpha Beta, we said, well, we're gonna cycle straight into the atrium and then go underneath that to cycle space. Of course, everyone's doing cycle space now. And I remember being told uh, by a, a well-known developer that was mad that I was giving out space in this atrium for cyclists to come in. But, you know, we were fully let and they weren't. So um, <clears throat> you know, maybe the proof was in the pudding. Um, but I think it's a, it's a kind of a way of thinking about a building's user um, on an everyday level. And that in hotel and health club world has to be thought about all the time. If you then bring that to the commercial space, it's a very interesting way of doing it. And I think it opens up more possibilities and allows more ideas to be introduced to the, to the workspace rather than the sort of BCO guidelines, which will end up with a grid of seven, six, eight, four, and light levels and uniform lighting. And actually that's really not what we find people want. And I think the sort of experiential culture is, is what, you know, there's kind of thirst there at the moment for that. And so we're, we kind of feed our commercial work from our hotel work, and we feed our hotel work from our sort of the skills that come out of things like CLT and, and sort of offsite building and so on that, that we're embracing in London in the commercial work that we might do in the Maldives or Seychelles, um, you know, these exotic locations. 
but actually makes all the sense in the world because you're building in remote locations on islands where you can't get the sort of level of finish that a five or six star hotel would want. <clears throat> Each of these um, mass timber buildings we're doing, they get better as we're going along. I mean, we're learning, the engineers are learning, certainly the M&E people are learning. So, yeah, there we have much less sort of visible mechanical work on, on the ceilings, for example. Um, we've got sort of uh, openable windows, so it's sort of naturally ventilated as well. So again, a, a, a Briam um, excellent building. So we're very proud of that. And that actually is just completed this month. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to sort of um, the occupation of that building, as you say, on a great site overlooking the Regents Canal. So um, yeah, very, very uh, enjoyable process, the, the whole thing. And you've got a pretty big international workload as well. Sort of, where else are you working, and, and what are the sort of hot spots right now? Well, uh, hot spots. Well, yeah. Right now, we're um, we sort of we've done a lot of work in the Caribbean, and uh, and that's been very quiet for the last sort of ten years, really, maybe fifteen. And the Caribbean is extremely busy right now, so we're working in Saint Lucia, Antigua, BVI. Um, and then on the other, or sort of back into Europe, uh, we're working in Croatia um, on the islands there, and then further afield in the Red Sea. Um, so it's um, that, I, as I sort of touched on earlier, the sort of the, um, the creative concept work that we do in the, those spaces is really sort of fascinating, and and that's a that's a world that's so design hungry that it's a it's a sort of joy to be to be working in that in that. Um, our biggest job right now is the St. Lucia um, project, which is called Cabot St. Lucia. Um, and there we have an, an overall um, a series, it's a hotel uh, and resort and, and residences. Um, and some of those residences are colossal. Um, and we are embracing, we're actually making it um, lead platinum um, in terms of sustainability. So rather than Briam, it's, it's lead there. Um, and applying that to the individual villas and the resort it, itself. So um, we're blessed with, of course, fantastic um, 10 hours of sunshine a day and a prevailing wind of about 15 knots. So it's kind of easy to do the renewables um, in that location. But um, yeah, that's, a, that's, um, that's a, a joy. And I think it's the, the joy of working in both places and the way that they inform one another. It has been sort of um, something that um, keeps us um, sort of entertained and, and interested and sort of looking forward to every opportunity. Very good. Well, let's hope in the post-COVID environment we'll see the hospitality and tourism industries will get back to normal and we'll see plenty of growth in that area. So, Richard, uh, thank you very much indeed for your comments. Peter, thank you very much. Nice to speak to you.